Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to look at how to build a lithium ion battery pack using lithium ion phosphate prismatic cells. These cells I actually got it from a seller from Delhi uh, and uh, these cells are imported. Each of the cells is a nominal voltage of 3.2 which means that if you connect four cells in series you would get a 12 volt output which would help us to replace the current lead acid batteries. Now, where could you use this? This is going to be used for replacing your existing lead acid battery pack where you're using it uh, on an inverter or if you are going to build a solar system, you could use this uh, battery. And also, you could, if you don't actually have a dedicated lithium ion charger, you could actually use a uh, SMF mode. So along with that, you also need a good quality multimeter to test, test the each cell's voltage as well as you need a proper BMS, a good quality BMS. The one that I'm holding is a 4S 60 amp hour BMS, which is 60 amp hour charge and 30 amp hour discharge. You need to make sure that you have a BMS without which you should not be using these batteries. Along with that, normal all BMS would have a balancing cable as well. This would actually allow the BMS to detect each cell's individual voltage and disconnect the entire battery pack if one of the cells goes below the nominal voltage and uh, this would help uh, prevent any damage to the cells. So you normally get these cables along with BMS where you buy it and the BMS that I bought is actually I bought it from AliExpress when it was working but now you can actually contact the same seller which I'm going to leave in the link in the description you could contact them and uh, this one is actually a common port BMS with a B- minus and a P-. minus. The B- minus goes to the battery negative and the P- minus goes to the negative of the charger of your inverter or that's where you would drain the battery. Okay. So the balance cable has five, cable, five wires, five individual wires and you have to connect those to the batteries and fix it in the BMS. Now, the balance cable would be of five. The reason it's five is because the black wire would go to the negative side of the battery, the first negative side. That's where the BMS would also get connected. The first red wire would go to the positive of the battery where you're going to connect the negative of the BMS. The second red wire would go to the second cell positive from the negative side. I'll show you how you could determine that. The third wire would go to the third cell positive and the fourth wire would, would go to the positive side. You got to make sure that you connect these wires properly because if you disconnect, if you do not connect it properly and if you connect it with the BMS, it's going to burn the BMS. So you have to make sure that the balance cables are connected properly. And at the end, I have used a crimp connector. Uh, this is a Vijack crimp connector. You could buy it from Amazon uh, or from a local hardware. Uh, this would allow you to easily mount these cables to the battery. Now let's keep all that aside and let's see what else you need to know to determine or either how to connect these batteries. So you also need copper bus bus. And along with that, you need some nuts and bolts. I'm using a M5 nut and bolt to connect the terminals. These terminals do have a hole into it. So you could tight uh, the bus bars using the nuts. So let me show you how it's done. Before you even start, you have to make sure that the batteries are within the proper state of charge each of the cells are within their acceptable voltage ranges that is for example all the batteries should be within the same voltage for example if it's 3.38 then all voltage all battery cells should be within the same voltage plus or minus 0 0.05 0 0.05 should be fine okay so let me go ahead and take my multimeter So here the silver side is the positive and the copper side that you see, the copper brown color that you see is the negative. So let me go ahead and get the multimeter connected. 
So the first battery gives us a voltage reading of 3.42. The second cell is 3.38. The fourth cell is the third cell is 3.38 and the fourth cell is also 3.38. Now the first cell is pretty high, so I'm just going to change this. Uh, which is well within that range. I'm gonna I do have other set of batteries. I'm gonna bring that in So whenever you get the batteries, just make sure that you connect all the batteries in parallel with each other uh, At least for a couple of days uh, so that uh, all the cells equalize within the same voltage If you have a bench power supply do set the voltage to 3.65 and fully charge them top balance them and uh, This battery is 3.38 which is perfect. So we are good to go so let's get those batteries connected in series. Now, how do you connect the batteries in series? Before that, let me just make sure that all the voltages are fine. The reason why you see a negative sign on the battery uh, on the multimeter is because I've connected the negative probe with the positive side of the battery and the positive probe to the negative side of the battery. That's the reason why. So that's the first cell. The positive is at the bottom. And the negative is on the top. The second cell should be the negative should be at the bottom and the positive should be on the top. So the negative of the first battery would get connected with the positive of the second battery. And the fourth battery would have the negative at the bottom and the positive at the top. So that's the positive and negative terminal that we are going to use. So let's test the voltages. So we have a 3.38. The positive probe is with the positive side and the negative probe is with the negative side. Whereas the second cell would have negative 3.38 because I've connected the positive probe to the negative side. So the third cell is also 3.38, whereas the positive is at the bottom and the negative is at the top. That's the reason why you don't see any negative symbol there on the multimeter. And on the last cell, you should also see a negative symbol because the positive at the bottom, I'm sorry, the negative is at the bottom and the positive is on the top. So that's the reason why you see a negative symbol on the multimeter. So the batteries are aligned correctly. Now let's connect the buzz buzz. So the first cell negative would get connected with the positive of the second cell. So that's how it's done. Then the second cell negative would get connected with the positive of the third cell. Then the third cell negative would get connected with the positive of the fourth cell. So let's keep that bus bar. So now we should have two volt of those terminal from the positive and negative. Let's also test that out. So I've connected. So we have 13.45, which is perfect. So we could use this now. Guys, you have to make sure that you play it safe with these batteries. Now I have connected all the batteries uh, as well as the BMS cable. Now I did a mistake where I accidentally touched the negative with the, uh, neg the other cell positive and that's the reason why there's a spark. Uh, I just want to quickly show that out to you guys because you have to be safe when you connect the batteries. So the common port, that's the battery minus would go to the negative of the wire. The first black wire would go to the negative. The first red wire would go to the positive of the battery, the first cell positive. The second red wire would go to the second cell positive. The third wire would go to the third cell positive and the fourth wire would go to the fourth cell positive. So this is how you construct a compact lithium ion phosphate batteries. Guys, you just need to know that how the uh, series works because connecting these batteries are pretty simple, pretty easy. Now you could use this on your normal inverter as well. I'm going to connect this to my UTL gamma place and I'll show you. So I have the UTL gamma place and if you see the negative of the BMS has been connected to the negative side of the gamma place. And the positive side 
would go to the positive terminal. When you connect it, there would be little spark because the capacitors are going to be charged inside the inverter. So there should be a small, small spark there. So we got it connected. Now, if you look at the inverter, the inverter should be turned on. So if you scroll to the menu, we should see the battery voltage as well. So we have 13.3, which is good. Now you could also turn it on and you could also start using these batteries. Once you connect these batteries, make sure that you have the SMF or tubular mode turned on as a charge profile if you do not have a dedicated charger. As long as you have a proper BMS and as long as you have the the, the voltage of SMF mode, which is well within the lithium ion phosphate range, you could pretty much use it. So this is something that uh, you all can try, but I would suggest that you be safe, try it at your own risk. Uh, if you know that uh, you are pretty uh, knowledgeable on this, you could certainly try it. But these, if when you when you start using these batteries, you would really know how good the batteries are, and uh, this is going to be a replacement of your lead acid battery. Uh, the size is also pretty small. Now look at the size, it's only eight, uh, 80, 85 amp hour and it's almost uh, small. And now I actually have a 24 volt system as well. This is a BMS which I got it from the seller. It's a 100 amp hour 8S BMS. I'll make a 24 volt system battery as well. I'll put it in the next video. If you like this video, do give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, do let me know. And I would be there to help you out guys. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned.